got bit today. These kids come to school every day and they look forward to seeing me and I look forward to seeing them and having our little interaction. But I just don't want to be bit. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a reasonable desire to have. Let's Can we start there? Just that that's a reasonable yeah. desire to not want to get bit. Where are you? In my living room. What's going on? I'm just hanging out, kind of looking at the lights. Been on hold for a little bit watching the show. Uh, girlfriend just went to sleep, so I've just been chilling. How can I get you today? Is there anything in particular you called in to talk about? Man, well, I got bit today. And honestly, like, stuff like this is a normal occurrence. I just don't really know how to deal with it anymore. Kind of over it. And I kind of feel bad because... I think it's my responsibility not to be over it. So I'm just conflicted. So it says here that you were bit today by a human child and that you work with children that have behavioral issues. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's that's very accurate. Tough job. Tough it is. job. So tell me this. I'm sure you knew before you got into it that it would be a tough job, and yet you chose to get into it anyway. Why did you make that decision? Um, well, I, you know, I love uh, the community I grew up in. Uh, mm -hmm. I love sports in general, and so I started coaching, you know, local basketball teams as a side hobby and I realized that it's something I really love to do. So I tried to get back into my, you know, hometown system where I can start coaching and, you know, uh, just being a part of something again. And it just been something that has brought me like a lot of joy and purpose in my life. But I'm not like somebody that has a typical degree so being in the school system is just hard in general so I kind of have to get in where I can fit in and being in one of these roles as like a helper for you know these kids with special needs um, you know is a great way to get into these districts but it just kind of sucks in general just because you're more or less just viewed as not you know super important or super integral to anything that really you, know. you feel as though yeah, this job true. working with special needs kids you feel as though it is it is not a respectable or or not respectable but not a respected um profession around the community oh yeah like and it's not something i guess i necessarily knew what well, before I got the job, but after getting the job and just like through social media and stuff, I see like, yeah, this is definitely something where other people have these same issues where they, you know, are stressed out about what's going on and they deal with too much at work for, you know, to be honest, not enough pay. It's just, yeah. it's just tough. So I feel like I'm in this box to where, I did actually end up being getting into a situation where I'm able to coach. So I am coaching now and I'm loving it, but my day to day is just so awful. And, you know, getting bit and punched and slapped and kicked and cussed out by children, you know, who I know, you know, can't necessarily control it. So it's not their fault. Um, I just, I, 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 it's it's just a weird anger, not anger, but it's just a weird emotion to have because you're not really sure who to direct your frustrations at. Um, so I wanted just the thing you said at the beginning, where you were like, you feel yeah. as though part of the job is dealing with I forget exactly what you said but you said something where that that indicated that you were feeling guilty about this feeling you have of of it being too much and of not wanting to do it anymore 
Yeah. Um, because honestly, the, like you build with these relationships with these kids, and you know, if I'm not even if I'm not a full on teacher, uh, like these kids come to school every day and they, you know, look forward to seeing me, and I look forward to seeing them and having our little interactions. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not able to pay my bills. Um, mm. I'm not able to do you know extra things for my girlfriend who deserves it, who supports the hell out of me, yeah. you know? And so it's just like, it's a really conflicting place to be in. So now I'm like, like I need to get out and get something better. That way I can get to the next stage in life. But at the same time, okay. I know they're not going to hire somebody that maybe cares as much as I do. And maybe it's because did, they didn't grow up in the same town as me, you know, and they don't see themselves in these children, but, I don't know. It's one of those tough things where it's like, okay, if I give up on them, everybody else is too. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. I just don't want to be bit. Yeah, I, I mean that's a reasonable desire to have. Let's can we start there? Just that that's a reasonable yeah. desire to not want to get bit. You know, you're. I think you're demanding this like Superman like energy out of yourself that it is not realistic off the bat. Yeah. Um, because you're like guilty about the fact that you don't want children to bite you and hit you. Yeah. But also I get it. I understand what you're saying. You feel as though you feel this responsibility, which is noble of you. It's noble of you. And there's many, I don't know, man, it's, it's, this is a tough thing. And I, I don't know either way because there's a lot of different schools of thought about it. Um, there's the school of thought to nobility, which is that you, you kind of take on pain and discomfort and unruliness of these kids and you do it for the noble higher purpose that if you give up on them, everyone else will. And there's something to that school of thought. Um, but there's a lot of other schools of thought that could say, well, you're a human being too. And you need to recognize your own fallibility that, uh, yeah, getting kicked and hit sucks and if you can't do it anymore and you don't have the energy then it's a disservice to yourself and possibly even to the kids for you to be involved in something that you know is just fucking weighing down on you um <clears throat> and I don't know where I'm not going to say that any of those are the right choice but maybe that is the the point here maybe that that neither of those is the right choice you know what i'm saying so yeah whatever you do decide to go with i i would hope that there is i hope that the understanding that neither of those is the quote right choice helps you with the 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 kind of cognitive dissonance of it you know as as in whichever you choose you can lean into if you decide yeah. that you want to take this on as a noble purpose and you want to you know go at it warrior mode then all right we can lean into that and we can take pride in the fact that that's what we've chosen and that, you know, it's not the wrong choice. And if we want to do the other thing and we want to go, I need to live my own life and not get fucking, you know, stuff thrown at me all the time. Then, you know, that's not the wrong choice either. Yeah. What do you um, think about all of that? 
No, it's, it's, you bring up, you know, a lot of valid points. Um, even just the stuff weighing down on me. Um, I felt that today, let's say I coach basketball. Um, so, uh, like I went to practice today after, you know, having a tough day at work and I just felt myself being a little bit more heavy on, you know, the, uh, the other kids that I work with. And at the end of the day, they are kids like, um, they're high schoolers. And so it's just like, okay, now I'm, you know, faced, faced with a lot of emotions, you know, uh, there it's like, okay, you know, now you're not, you're not being the best you. And I've been having more and more thoughts of like, uh, I only do get one life. So yeah, I have to kind of choose how I live it. Yeah. And it's a legitimate so thought. next step is pretty crucial. Um, I love what I do. Like, I wish I could do what I do forever. Um, honestly, if I was getting paid enough to live on, I could get, you know, punched and slapped and kicked by a billion of these kids. Like, it doesn't matter to me. But, yeah, you know, whenever you have to go home and face, you know, other realities, that just makes it tougher. So. What state do you live in, can I ask? Uh, Kansas. Kansas and they don't and you're a a high school teacher uh so I work in the elementary school and I yeah oh I thought you said they were high school kids so I coach at the high school level you coach at the high school level okay and you don't really get paid to coach that much you met your main job where you Mm -hmm. get paid is the elementary school yep I, I yeah essentially I get a stipend um, for coaching, but with the hours I have to miss because I'm hourly and not a normal teacher, I actually end up losing money. Um, you know, driving back and forth and taking yeah. hours out of the check to go over and coach. Yeah, but it, that that's that, that's something I knew I was going to have to do. So that's not as big a deal to me. Hey, you bring up a good point. I I, I when, you, when you say that you only have one life and is this how I really want to live it? I mean, I always think that that's a what's a prime way to think about um that's a prime framing device upon which to to think about your life you know that it's crazy crazy short um yeah and you should you know (sighs) yeah it's tough man yeah it's tough honestly though like you know i've been reading some books um that I've been, you know, interested in. Like, and I haven't been reading in a while, you know, for the last couple of years of my life. So I've been kind of just rethinking myself and, you know, listening to podcasts. Me and my girlfriend discovered you about a year ago. And it's, I mean, stuff you say, man, it, it changes some of my perspective. So I got to thank you there. And cool. it's helped me through the last couple, you know, whatever months. And just trying to be a better human about it. Cool. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I think... Fuck, man. I don't know. You're doing the best you can out here. I feel like that's all you can do, right? I mean, you gave, if oh, if yeah. if anything, if anything, I hope that whatever you choose. Listen, t- listen. First of all, so many people, more people than not, have been like, "Fuck those kids. Why would I ever want to do that?" That's like most yeah. people. Oh, yeah. That's me, by the way. I would never do this. I'd never do this so no, for you you have all the right <laughs> well okay so i and i don't say that i say that i say that to mean for you to do it is a lot for you to do it for however much time you did it for you to do it you literally like to do it until you cannot any longer is so much <laughs> so whatever Dude, you decide to do that. take you know pride in that Thank you. And I will. Um, um, thank you. Th- th- yeah, just thank you for um, talking to me about this, man. Um, of it's been a lot on my chest. And honestly, it's not something I can talk to my coworkers about because it just gets weird, you know, because now you're talking to your boss about how much you hate yeah. your job and yeah. just stuff like that. And my girlfriend, like, 
you know, I don't like bothering her with about about it every day because yeah. you know you like to keep their positive. So well, well, well. I want to say this: it's, it's you, you mentioned a funny thing just now. Your coworkers, I mean, not necessarily your bosses, but the other coaches. How do they feel about this shit? Um, so they all kind of have different, you know, life, you know, places. Um, some of them work uh, at the high school level, so they kind of make a salary, and they, you know. They've making, been making some money for a while, so they're a little more comfortable in life. Um, another, like a couple other ones have other jobs to where they have good money. So I'm the only one that's really still at that first stage of life, still. Okay. And um, it's due to me making just like silly choices in my early mm-hmm. 20s, which is whatever. Like that's everybody, but I'm just kind of trying to play catch up, but. I'm trying to like catch it my way too. I don't really want to, you know, if I'm forced into this box where I have to go to the conventional route, I guess I'll have to at the end of the day. But <clears throat> I'm just trying to, you know, do what I can. Um, Josh, thanks for all the kind of words and for, um, uh, you know, getting bit by children so that I- so that I and many others don't have to. Oh, hey, Lyle, uh, thank you for your kind words, Zid. Uh, Anything else you want to say it. to the people of the computer before we go? Nah, um, you know, live your life, be you. Like I said, you only get one life, so. It's true. Uh, do what you can to make sure it's the best one for you. Hey, take care, Josh. You too. I liked I liked him. I liked him. He was nice. And I didn't just like him because he was nice to me. Sometimes I like people when they're when they're mean to me. So, you know, you can't make me like you just by being nice. I liked him because, well, because he was nice, and um, I felt just I kind of felt him because that's a tough thing with the with the money and I don't I was gonna say something about how it's a failure of the system but (coughs) I'm I don't like talking about um social economic stuff because I'm stupid and I have no idea what I'm talking about um but he's really doing the best he can and I could tell he is I could tell he was like he's down to go the fucking warrior mode of like I believe in what I'm doing so much that I don't care about getting pissed on by high school kids. Um, but he just can't because they're not paying him enough to to do it, and that's a bummer. But again, I meant what I said when I was like I wouldn't do this. Most of the people who are listening to this right now wouldn't do it. So the fact that he did it for any amount of time is something to be proud of. Um, And I hope he finds a good balance where he's not fucking killing himself just to serve this cause. But feels as though he's doing a thing that is, uh, like he was saying, worthy of his short amount of time on the earth. Oh, let's take a call. Hello. Hi, who is this? Hi, this is Chloe. Hi, Chloe. How's it going? It's going good. How about you? Uh, I am... I'm feeling pretty good, actually. Uh, I'm, 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 on a, I'm, on a, I'm on a spiritual journey, Chloe. I'm trying to uh, protect my peace more. I'm trying to... Um, Work as little as I possibly can. Uh, take more deep breaths, and I, uh, I don't not eat thirty pieces of candy in one day. It's going all right. <laughs> you know those are good goals. It sounds like you're practicing mindfulness a bit. I'm trying. Uh, I mean, I get up on this fucking podcast, and everyone's asking me about what to do in their lives and I I hope they know that I have absolutely no idea 
Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do I with my own. I think just hearing advice from a gecko. Um, what's going on with you, Chloe? Oh, uh, not much. I'm chilling in bed right now, talking to you. Why? What did What did you do today? Uh, let's see. I went to the gym, had a crazy session, and got back and just had a me, myself, and I day. And I had a therapy session, and I just chilled and I watched you, and here I am now. Um, how do you feel right now? Do you feel therapized? <laughs> uh, I feel relaxed, but that's probably because I am in bed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, listen. Uh, you did tell the call screener something, and I, I got. I, you told the call screener that your mom wishes that you were gay. Yeah, she's kind of wished that ever since she was in high school. What your what and your mom? It, wait, ever since she, ever since she was in high school, she wished that you were gay. Like ever since she was in high school, oh, she wished she had a gay daughter. No, no. Ever since I was in high school. Basically, oh, okay. I I think there's a few reasons for it, but I don't believe in love at first sight. And I only experienced it once in my life. It was when I was in high school, and it was with a girl. Uh, it, nothing ever came of it, but I think that's when she started really pushing for me to be gay. <laughs> and I, I don't know, ever since with any time that I've had a partner, they've all been men. It's like they lose brownie points for not being a woman. <laughs> Man, your poor mother. <laughs> I truly do feel uh, bad for I her. Mean, I, I think her heart is in the right place. It's just for, for me, it's a little bit... It, it causes me to question things because she hasn't really ever steered me wrong. And I know parents don't mm. always know everything but she's been pretty damn right a lot of the time and interesting sometimes i'm like should i be <laughs> mm. okay so your mother has uh uh you know given you advice and direction in life that has been very beneficial to you and so part Absolutely. of you is wondering if if maybe she's right and you should be gay <laughs> yeah i mean i i'm bi uh but I've never really explored a relationship. With wait, wait, before. you're 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 bi. Yeah, that's a really good compromise. She has to admit that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think her argument is that since I've never explored it, that I should. Okay. Um. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Your mo your mom's your mom said to you that you should explore sexually with other like. Okay, here's what I wanted to ask: When you said your mom has pushed you mm -hmm. to be gay, what does that actually look like? What does that mean? It it means that okay, so when it started in high school, it was very subtle. It was always like, you know, I'd, I'd be okay with it if you wanted to date a girl or. She would try to elude that my girlfriend ah, okay. Hinting at it. girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. But in adulthood, it's been more like, you know, you, you try to date a woman. You, you don't don't go with that guy. Go go meet a girl first. <laughs> and, um, when I'm in a relationship, a committed one, she always just kind of dies. And mm. I I just know what she's dying at. I I know what she wishes. She wishes that I was an independent woman living in NYC with a girlfriend with maybe two cats in a high rise. That's what she wishes. Here's what <laughs> I no think. Babies. Here's what I think. Obviously, we all know you cannot choose your sexuality. And I think your mom I think your mom is I think your mom wishes she was gay. Um you know it could be a She's been through three divorces, but she's married to a man now. She's been through... Th she, I think she's had terrible experiences with men. She wishes that she was gay, but um, 
And so, because, but because she can't just be gay, she, I guess, wants you to be gay so she can live vicariously through you? I mean, it's so strange, though, because I have a trans brother, and before he was trans, he was dating a girl for school. So, it's like she could live vicariously through him, but she wants to do it through me instead. Wait, so your brother is trans, mm -hmm. and bef mm -hmm. I guess before they transitioned, they were presenting mm -hmm. as female. Yeah. And dating a woman. Yeah. And, and then now transitioned into a straight man. Yes. And your they, poor they fucking mother. Partner. She almost had her dream. <laughs> almost, almost, just almost. nearly. Wow. Yeah, it's a it's a strange family. My mom's Buddhist. My brother is Wiccan, and my sister is Jewish. Your brother is Wiccan. What does that mean? Uh, it's a vein off of paganism, I believe. That's sick. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Anytime that I go to him and his wife, uh, they do rituals, tie knots, like candles. I, I think there's something to do with gods and goddesses. It's interesting. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, I, so let me ask you this in seriousness Do you uh, have a good relationship with your mom? Yeah, I definitely do. I went to go visit her in Wales for three months last year and it helped me so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I um, call her pretty much every time I get out of the gym too. So we, we stay connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that's good. Hmm. Uh, uh, t like how often is she, she, is she still like, She's is she, is she still unrelentingly trying to push you to be gay? Uh, you know, she's definitely backed off in the past six months or so because I have been with someone for two and a half years now. Okay. Um, and she's kind of gotten to a point of can't be, <laughs> but it's also she all she does sometimes ask, you know, if I ever thought about exploring that side of things and it, it just I don't know I, I am thinking about it for way too long after those conversations with her yeah no it's uh but I don't want to sacrifice a great relationship for something like that for exploring something uh have you told your mom uh that it's that it's weird to keep asking you if you're gay I I guess I, it felt normal because she's been doing it for so long that I never thought to even tell her that. Okay. I mean, does it bother you? It no, it just makes me question things. It makes me question my relationship and question if I'm making the right choice or not. <laughs> okay. Well, um, what's your name? Uh, Chloe. Chloe, you seem like a very sweet uh, person and... Um, Sounds like you have a good life, a family that you care about, a, a partner that you care about. Um, I I have no idea what your mom's deal is, but I hope that uh, you you don't let her. Uh, I don't know, worm into your head about whether or not you are making the right decisions with your life. Because um, are you happy right now? Yeah. Okay, well, you got there uh, based on following your own decisions, so I, I assume that following your own decisions will lead you to further happiness in the future. Thank you. I think you're right. Um, but I don't know. I don't, maybe your mom knows more than me. <laughs> maybe. Maybe she has a crystal ball. <laughs> uh. Chloe, is there anything else that you want to say to me or the people of the computer before we go? 
no, no. I, it was nice chatting with you. It was nice chatting with you too, Chloe. Thank you very much for calling. Good night. Hello. Hi, is this Lyle? Yes. Who is this? Hey, it's Evan. What's your what's 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 your life like? Um, it's good. Uh, I live in San Francisco. I've been working a lot. Fucking expensive as fuck to live here, but still doing it as best I can. Um, I'm gonna see you uh, with my friend Christy, who I turned on to your stream. Um, we just got tickets, uh, so we're excited oh, to cool. catch you in San Francisco. Fuck yeah, man! That the Swedish American Hall. I've heard it's a great venue. I'm very excited. Yeah, it's awesome. I've seen a lot of good shows there. Um, so listen, Evan, is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about today? Um, yeah, actually, uh, I wanted to thank you for, um, being part of connecting me with my current partner. Um, I dressed as the therapy gecko for Halloween this past year and, uh, met them at the goth night, um, which was <laughs> fucking hilarious and awesome. Um, they're listening right now, I think too. Um, really? but yeah, we're, we're in like separate houses, but, uh, but yeah, I wanted to shout them out. Hi, Nas. Hello, Nas. So your partner, uh, like, what do they say to you? Um, we had, like, I think we had matched on, like, Bumble or Hinge or something, like, maybe a week or two before. And then, like, the day of Halloween, we are like, oh, yeah, like, kind of, like, what are you doing for Halloween? And it turned out we were both going to the same, like, party at uh, DNA Lounge. They do, like, a, a goth night that, like, a couple of my friends go to regularly, and they had invited me to go to. And I was nervous about, like, having a costume or whatever because I haven't dressed up in a long time. Um, but I was just like, well, fuck, if I'm going to go, like, and I'm going to be at a goth night, like, what would be a fun thing to go as? So instantly, Therapy Gecko was, was the jam. How much was your costume? Because I bought two today, and they were both $90. Yeah, it was around that, if I'm going to be real. <laughs> You spent ninety. But I mean, look for me. Every- I'm like, I'm never gonna. For me, I'm like, I, I, I'm never gonna regret buying a gecko costume because I need them all the time. But you bought, you spent ninety dollars on this fucking gecko costume to wear it one day. Fuck yeah, dude! Well, I, I got to wear it to two parties like over that weekend. Um, okay, that's worth it. But uh, yeah, I, I had a question for you actually about uh, like you have a couple of them. You bought two today. You said right. I did. I bought two today. Um, what, like, in terms of maintenance, uh, I had to throw away the feet after like one night out because they were fucking horrifying. So, um, so when you go out on tour and you're like, no, no, go oh, ahead. Go finish your question. No, no, you finish your question, then I'll hop in. Is there any way to like treat them? Because I kept the hands and the head, um, because I think they're funny and they're like hanging up in my room. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, the feet were destroyed after, like, one night out, like, walking around in San Francisco. They are fucking disgusting. The feet get totally fucked. The reason I have to buy – I ha- so here's the thing. I have, I, have, I have infinite amount of heads. I have so many heads, so many torsos, and so many pants, but I'm always low on feet and hands because um, – the feet, they get fucked up all the time. So I'll typically, I'll have to spend 90 bucks to buy a whole costume just for the feet. Because I'm, I'm, I'm always running low on feet because they get fucked up so easily. And I'm about to go on this, you know, crazy tour. And so I'm going to need, uh, and you're, yes, you're correct. The feet get fucked up anytime you wear them out. So, um. Yeah, you, you gotta, like, honestly, you should reach out to the company that makes them and see if they could do, like, a bespoke deal for you and be like, hey, like, I need X amount of feet. Like, give me, like, 400 of these bad boys and, like, a good, a good chunk of hands. Cause I feel like, yeah, a- everything else is pretty durable. Like, the, the suit itself is fine. Like, even just from, like, two nights out. And, like, honestly, the, the, the club that I was at was, like, really packed and, like, I got trampled a bit. So, like, that definitely put more wear and tear on it than, like, either sitting on stage or, like, talking to somebody, like, out in the world, but, whew. See, here's the thing, is I might, I've thought about reaching out to the company that makes them, but I'm scared to negotiate with them because, and look, I, maybe it's not a, a good idea to say this publicly, but it, here's the thing, that I need them so much more than they need me. You have no idea. <laughs> they, this is the, I feel oh, like you're getting to a point that the tables could turn, though. 
No, no, Evan, Evan, and Evan. If they stop making this gecko costume, I um, my career is over. I'm fucked. I, I can't. <laughs> there's got to be some. There's got to be some listeners that have like crazy Etsy businesses that would make you some bespoke suits. Like I don't know why that isn't a thing already. Well, look, I'll like, tell you what. You and you... I both had to go to the same place. If you ever want to make your ninety dollars, if you ever want to, you know, I'll, if you ever want to make your ninety dollars back, you know, hang on to that suit, and maybe one day I'll buy it off of you. <laughs> It'll be missing feet, which is like the most important part. Twenty dollars. <laughs> it's yours. I'll say I'll bring you. You said you got too many heads, but I'll bring you an extra pair of hands that are only lightly used when I come see you in San Francisco. They're okay, my gift to you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. By the way, I want to say something. I appreciate that you said that I helped you meet your partner, but in the story you told, I had nothing to do with it. You guys just matched on Bumble. Well, yeah, I mean, but it was our first time, like, meeting in person. Like, the first time we saw each other in real life. Okay. Like, I was full. Like, I did the green face paint. I did everything. Like, I tried to go screen accurate. I bought a, I brought a microphone. So I just made you look a little bit insane. I actually detracted from this. <laughs> Not at all. I had I had a couple people actually come up. Like I got a lot of people asking if I was like Yoshi or like a frog. But I had a, quite a few people that recognized me as Therapy Gecko, and some people That's that awesome. actually thought I was you. That's fucking sick. That's amazing. Um, yeah, they were all really stoked. Like, everyone that knew what it was were, like, really fucking hyped. Like, you got a lot of love in, in San Francisco. Damn, that's fucking sick. That's awesome. I'm sure that way more people just thought you were a frog, though. <laughs> I did I did get a couple frogs. But I think it was also... I, I don't know what the full crossover is, but Goth Knight is definitely has, like, a higher capita, I think, of just out in the world. Like than out in the world, people who recognize me as Therapy Gecko, which is hmm. kind of fun. Hmm. Um, what did your what did your partner dress as? Um, they were in like latex, like bondage gear. <laughs> well, it sounds like you two had a we fun got, night. We did. We like right after we met, like five minutes after meeting in person, we took uh like photo booth pictures that are fucking hilarious um i can i can send you them to, uh, on instagram if you want but yeah it was what fucking wild you, i actually tagged did, you like when i was walking around you tagged me in them yeah um i i uh, not in that one but when i was like walking around uh like nsf and like getting gecked out by like my friends they um uh, like I, I tagged you in a, a couple photos of me as therapy gecko on Halloween, and you liked them, and I said thank you. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, I did. I saw a lot of people who were. I I, I liked to uh, that night. I, I went through my like mentions and and liked all the photos of people dressed as me, but I didn't see any versions of me that were being um, uh, uh, masochistically choked by someone in leather leather outfits. <laughs> I'll have to go back and look though. Um, we're we're out there, Evan. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer? I appreciate your homage. Um, no, nah, man. Uh, honestly, I'm just really stoked to talk to you. I've called in a couple times. I've gotten through to your call screeners, who were super nice. Like it was great to hear them on the stream. Um, this has been a, a great stream tonight. Like I, I caught most of it. I started listening when I was at work, and it got me through to getting home. Um, I'll yeah, say shout this. out the survivor of the Weenie War. I'll say this. I want to say this. Um, fucking. Oh, if you have one more usage of the gecko costume, wear it to the show. Really? Okay. My friend who, who got us the tickets was asking, they were just like, should we, should we go all as geckos? And I was like, that's kind of crazy, but like, we Where could, are, like, people have, people, no, people have done that before. Wear it. If you, anyone listening to this, if you're coming to the live show and you have a gecko costume, wear it, wear it to the show, please. Show All your right, dedication. You, this is how I'm going to start my cult. Um, thank you for calling, Evan. I appreciate it, man. Of course. Have a great night, Gek. You too. Hello? Oh, is Ge Gecko? Mr. Gecko? Yeah. Who is this? Hey. Hi, this is uh, Alexander. You might, you might know me as Lex, though. What's going on, Lop? Alexander. Oh, shit. 
Yes, it says here oh, that he- um, it says here uh, Alex from Chicago went to high school with you. We didn't go to high Not school together, to high but school we we no 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 no. Your call screener got that incorrect. Let me make no no. Well, I know what I went to high school with. Met you through. Hence, we yes. almost made that watermelon time travel movie together. But that's a whole other thing. What's up, man? Yes, one of my one of my best friends of all time. Uh, went to uh, a high school in Baltimore where, and you went to that high school, and uh, we yes, a we, very we good man. That. Yeah. How are you doing, man? How's it been? Yeah, it was, it's been a fucking a roller coaster, man. I'm actually doing pretty decent right now. I'm actually life updates. I do kind of want to get to the story I got to tell you, but life updates is I'm currently in a outpatient rehab program. I'm currently working for my best entrance on uh, sobriety's sake, which I've been mm-hmm. on and off a couple times over the years. But this is kind of the most serious I've taken it in the darker news of things going on in my life. But mm-hmm. mentally, I'm doing pretty great and kind of like a upswing but not as bad as it could be i'm just people don't know too i'm talking to you like you know me i'm a bipolar one diagnosed i do do real therapy and all that not to undermine you geck but uh, i do do all the necessary please stuff undermine and, me yeah. i am not a real therapist <laughs> dude i've been getting like as much help from you at this point as my real therapist i used to i really? found your show not for like i'd seen you put up some clips like back in the day of you doing this uh get up but I was working at concierge downtown at a place called Block 37 in Chicago, and I was just bored as shit, like, on this computer for, like, eight-hour shifts, and I just fuck around, like, on Reddit sometimes, and I open Reddit one day, and you're just, like, the top of the fucking page, and I'm like, I know mm-hmm. that, Gecko. That's fucking Lyle. No way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I've been mm-hmm. watching long-time watchers since, like, COVID times, or beginning wow. of COVID times, and, uh, yeah, like, third-time caller finally getting through. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, man. That's cool. I remember, um... I remember when we were in high school, I was really excited to meet you because um, you were another guy who I, I was I, I you know, I made uh, movies in high school and I made movies with my friends. But I think my friends um, at the time, like they 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 loved helping out with the movies, but I don't think any of them like wanted to like like th- on their own, like pursue being a, a filmmaker or anything yeah on the fucking money with your like as far as sketch comedy goes next to like whitest kids and like what a couple of my fa- like you know jordan peele and fucking like Chappelle show and shit as far as like independent stuff that was coming from like my hometown like the skits that y'all were doing were like one of my favorite things especially like mm-hmm. at the end of high school man well thanks man so, I, yeah, I, I was gonna say re- I, I was i was excited to meet you at the time because you were another guy who wanted to make who wanted to make films and i i feel like i i, I, hadn't I am, met a lot I of was. dudes like yeah. that yeah man no totally i was pursuing it semi-seriously at the time i'd done a bunch of like weird kind of crazy shit in middle school this movie called like none with a gun and uh some horror movie called silent but deadly and a whole bunch of like goofy shit that um yeah, I don't know. People were, like, pretty impressed that a fucking kid could do, even though I felt like I was just fucking around. So I decided to go to that uh, Magnet Art High School for it. And that's when I became yep. uh, pretentious and thought, like, oh, I could be Stanley <laughs> Kubrick and, like, all this shit. Which, I, you know, garnered some, like, decent work. But, I don't know, I look back at who I was in, like, high school. And even though I did a bunch of fun shit, I definitely look back at, like, who I was as an artist back then. It's just like, damn, I can't believe I was so high on myself because, you know, I was just a kid. Like, I was doing cool things but if you would ask me i would have been like i'm the greatest but i don't know that's a bipolar well, like mentality whatever well yeah <laughs> i mean i i w- i was too in high school i went my i think my you know my friends and i we thought we were like the funniest guys and you know uh, i mean if you would ask me else, then i would have and... confirmed that too though not to kiss your ass but dude, <laughs> well, you I appreciate like, that. <laughs> but it's not well it's funny because the whole idea of like i guess with art and making things in general there's a there's a there's a line you have to walk right because I think to make good stuff you have to you have to really believe in yourself and really believe that what you're doing is good enough to to exist for in, like just to propel you to make it but then also not walk the line of like you know being uh you know getting getting too high on yourself yes absolutely true but that was the thing like I had bought into all the um you know, there's every celebrity and their mother has a video out there that's like, believe in you and da da da, the rest will follow type shit. And I saw all of those when I was like a kid. So by the time that I did get to like 
you know, the point where I was making work where I was like recognized at least like by the state for it. I was like, oh, fuck it. The world is my oyster. I got to believe that I'm the best there is or yada, yada, yada. But I don't know. I came out to Chicago and then I realized a lot more like leaving hometown that it's really not all about you, which is like obviously a big thing for life. But I mean, yeah. it's not. It, you go out to a place that you're unfamiliar with. You kind of like accept the fact that you are a tourist in another place. You're not like settled with this hometown that you've fucked around with for 18 years like I was in Baltimore. And mm -hmm. you kind of realize the things are a lot bigger than you. And I've been like very, I think, selflessly pursuing that for the last seven years. But to kind of segue to my story, man, I'm like at a crossroads. I'm probably in June going to head back to Baltimore, at least temporarily, and then continue on with the next place. I think Chicago is wraps. So why why are you at a crossroads? What are the what are the two roads? I, one is coming back to Baltimore, and what's the other one? Uh, the other one is just kind of like I don't know. I've been a part of this band for like seven years, and I help like I don't know. It's someone else's band, but I definitely am like as far as like you ever seen Social Network? You know that movie, the Facebook of course, movie. Yeah, of course. If there's an Edward Saverin like character in this of this band, then I'm definitely the one that's like, sorry, my fuck you flip flops are at the what's it called? Like, I got some sort of like sake to being here because I've been around so long, but I don't care. It's this other kid's fucking band. I've just been a part of it since. Oh, okay. Again. So but, you're you're getting you're getting zucked out of your band. Uh, sort of. I'm zucking myself in a way. That's why I okay. can't be full Edward Saverin. I'm kind of yourself. zucking myself, but I get zucked a little bit. It's a. Uh, a little more dramatic than the fucking, I don't know, that, that, that Zuckerberg guy, though. I don't think he ever got shot at. And that's kind of the thing, man. Chicago's a very violent place. I don't know. I've been so, dealing with it for a while, but it just kind of got wait, a little too personal. Wait, wait, wait. So, so you're, hold on. Oh, just, yeah, yeah, your, 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 ba your bandmate tried to shoot you? Uh, let me clarify for the record's sake. Because, one, we're keeping bro anonymous. We can look back at this later as a ha ha ha, very funny. But this is a thing that happened, kind of an ongoing thing that I'm still going to be like, all right, I'll describe in detail, but only vaguely. Okay. Right, so let's just do the day of this thing happening because I will say yes, but let me explain. <laughs> the day that this happened, I was about a couple weeks deep into coming off my last job. So I was kind of in this place where it's like, you know, What's the bullshit that I need? What do I don't need? What can I sell? What can I make money off of just so I got some groundwork that I can move on top of besides that, 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 that. trying to make money independently for a second. So one of the things that I had was this weed pen that it was like $120. I used to work at this head shop called The Other Side in Towson. I got it like $120 there. It's a nice little like pen battery. And somebody offered to buy it for me for like $60. I'm like, fucking cool. I could totally use $60 right now. I don't even smoke weed like that. So, well, I don't smoke pens like that. So I can totally sell this thing. It's fine. But the problem was my roommate was using it at the time. And it was like eight o'clock and I ate in the morning and I had to leave and he was asleep. And I was just like, oh, fuck it. Oh, two very important point of the story too. It's not just one roommate. It's, well, we're talking about the one guy, but he has a girlfriend uh -huh. too, who's also another roommate. So it's a whole couple okay. situation. So I go and I knock on this couple's door and I'm like, yo, I'm sorry, but I got to get that pen back because I got to sell it. And I just feel like, oh, you know, and so I'm doing my thing, get my things together for like 20 minutes or so. I go back and nobody's there at the door. So I knock again. I'm like, yo, I got to head out. And they're like, just let us sleep. And I'm like, yo, fucking, I didn't say like, why, but I'm like, I really need this now. Please let me go. And they didn't. They didn't open the door and they didn't give me the thing. And I was like, fuck it, I got to go. So I did. I left and I didn't make the $60. I made a little bit more money, but I didn't make as much as I could have. So I go back home and I'm fucking pissed. And I don't know, kids are up at this point And I'm just like, basically just like, don't talk to me. Like, y'all kind of ruined that for the day. You've lost me money today. And y'all, I'm already kind of on bullshit with y'all because of rent and a whole bunch of other okay, dumb shit. Yeah. So just don't talk to me today. Just give it a day. Maybe we can talk about it later. But today, just don't. <sighs> Like 30 minutes go by, and I hear motherfuckers like snake, saying something in their room, like talking to each other. This is what they do. These two are the couple thing. Like they sure. definitely group together when they're like, all right, we're in trouble. I hope fucking so wait. It's, so so you're, you're, you're like, living I'm, in that. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm a bad listener for this, oh, but sorry, I'm, so you're, li no, you're no, living I'll, in the house with, um, with, with this, this guy and his girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, another okay. kid's in there too, All but right. he wasn't at home at the okay. time. And, some and then, and then so there's some tensions going on with this 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 vape pen that they didn't give you, and now they're kind of conniving yeah. in one corner, and things are boiling up. and And how did this escalate to the point where, um, 
you know by the way just i just want to let you know man if you if you <laughs> feel like you shouldn't tell this story for whatever legal reasons it's I mean, a, you... if there's a platform that i can tell it on it's definitely the get show it, i okay. just feel like this is definitely going to be all right i just wanted to give you that a second way. to think about it but go ahead <laughs> no definitely i think that i can't tell the story this, this happened like two weeks or two or three weeks ago now i definitely thought about it clear enough to think just okay so so, so just so so tell me if we could uh, like go to the because i want to hear more about about you and i want to make sure we have enough time to um yeah. you know get what how, can you can we where how did it escalate all right, so basically, like, after they group together, uh, the girlfriend comes out to me, and she um, has this, like, weed pen. It's like an ozone pen. Anybody who smokes weed pens knows this, like, little gray disposable pen. And she's like, I found, this is mine, and I found it the other day in your room completely empty. What do you have to say on some shit like that? And it's just, like, a million things went through my mind. But the very first thing that went through my mind was, holy shit. You went in my fucking room. Like, I keep my door locked. You went inside of my room. Like, I understood, like, I understood, too, like, okay, you're finding a thing that is, like, you think is yours. I get that maybe, but you went in my room. That's, like, just where I drew the line. And I was like, you went in my fucking room? No way. And so, basically, long story short, me and her are, well, first of all, let me explain. I also told her, too, before she even came to me about this, I was like, I fucking told you. I can't, don't feel like I can talk about this today. I really laid that out as best I could. I'm like, are you sure you want to talk about this? And she still did. So we're arguing about this fucking pen for no reason. And I don't know, she's going down the hall. She goes down the hallway. I'm on my side of the hallway. So we kind of have a distance between each other. But at the end of the argument, I realized that she was just talking in circles. I was just like, whatever. So I fucking toss the pen at her feet. I basically toss it back down the hallway and and toss it at her feet. Basically in my head being like the same way that I throw a fucking dog a bone because a fucking word went through my head. There's no fucking appropriate to it. I'm like, can't believe one in my fucking room. Oh my god! But yeah, I fucking threw this pen in her Okay. Seat. And then she goes. So 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 uh, goes, so Lex you? Lex, how did how did yeah. how did a gun get involved? Did did, did the that's like, what somebody... we're getting to the good juicy stuff in the next okay. five seconds. So I throw the pen in her feet. She goes, "Did you just throw a fucking pen at me?" Her boyfriend's not in the room, but that's enough for him to hear that and then come out okay. in the hallway. Did you just throw a fucking pen at me? So he comes out. He's running, walking towards me. No one's kept seven years. But I just see this looking at her. I'm like, oh, this kid's going to beat the shit out of me. And I'm just like, well, yes, you know yeah. what? He's talking about it so much for seven years. I'm just going to let him have it. Because honestly, I'm interested. I want to see how hard this kid can hit. So he comes up to me. He does exactly <laughs> okay. what I think. Well, a little bit more. He picks me up. He slams me on his uh, music setup, which I'm too just like, my piano's in the corner. You could have broken my piano, but you slammed me on your music setup. What the fuck? And then I'm on his music setup. And he just, wow, wow. Wow, like in the face over and over and over again and he kind of stops and i'm just like again because i'm like still talking i realize i can still talk i'm like again wow yeah. wow again wow and i'm just okay. telling him to lean into it but he's not fucking leaning into it to the point where i'm like dude i've been beat up like so much worse than this like this is so so boring if this is really what you've been threatening me with the whole time okay. and so this happens and it gets to the point too where he's like finally refuses to like beat the shit out of me because i just keep saying again like a fucking crazy person like i don't know somebody's in fight club too many times but sure. fucking man i just he finally stops he's like this kid must be crazy he just keeps wanting me to punch him and then he stops and then i go start going off like oh you hit like a bitch you got da, 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 just yeah, going off yeah. in this fucking kid for like no reason and i won't shut the fuck up because like i said dude bipolar when provoked man i okay. will fucking like go off especially okay. when stage. but i just okay. wouldn't shut the fuck up and the other point he was like he shut his door behind him in his room door was shut i was still talking shit and he comes out <laughs> went off on the floor and that just shut everybody up and man yeah. it was just like i don't know I didn't flinch. I did nothing. Like I just had experience. You know, Baltimore to Chicago, dude. I'm not gonna so, go into detail. But so, I've had Lex, Lex, with... let me, let me, let me, yeah. let me. <laughs> yes, cut me off, dude. What's up? Let me, let me, <laughs> let me. Okay, so you had this this pretty wild roommate encounter that you know. Um, I did. You were you were egging on a little bit, and you were also dealing with your own mental health problems at the same time. And is it sounds like a is a crazy, fucking mess. So, um, just like. I guess kind of, you know, I, I want to make sure we, we get to this before we go. <laughs> like, w- you're so you're doing better now. I want to know the arc because oh, yeah. um, you getting uh, beaten up on your roommate's music studio and uh, asking him to keep <laughs> hitting you does sound like a low point. And so I'm Absolutely. happy to hear 
that uh, as we're talking in in current day, you you you're feeling better and you're you're feeling at a at a higher point than then. And I want to know. And also check uh, out my, you know, not to undermine you again, but actual like therapists and psychiatrists and like okay, doctors yeah. and stuff. They're like, you're good. And I had to check too. I was like, man, how crazy am I? Everybody's. I took a couple weeks. Everybody says that I'm chilling. So I'm here talking to Gek now. <laughs> okay. So um, how do you how do you feel like you got there? Oh, uh, to the point in the well, it, let's back up a month. This motherfucker gets a gun in general. And I guess it was a couple months ago, but it was to one point where, you know, we live together. We've lived together. Me and this person lived together for basically like seven years. It's to the point with this place where it's just like the rent is just so like on time. Well, hold on. Let me stop you real quick. Let me stop. I'm talking about you and your personal journey because, again, it felt it seemed as though when you were in that encounter, you were yelling and you were you feel like you sounds like you were not in a good place. And as we're talking now, you feel like you are in a good place. And I just want to know. Uh, you know, from then to now, what you f- feel like is improved, and and how you feel like you got there. Oh yes, absolutely, man. Sorry that I was going right to the dark zone. No, no, no literally, worries, I probably. think that the best thing that I could have done for myself, and the thing was too, I gave myself like twenty four hours on it because I know how to at least in a roommate situation, like I can stay in my room for the most part, I can avoid people. We can probably just even if a dramatic situation happens, I know this seems way too dramatic for some people, but at least for me, when dramatic situations happen, for the most part, you can take a back seat. The problem was yeah. I took a back seat for twenty four hours and was still pissed off to the point where I'm like, I need someone to like check me for sure and make sure I'm good. So I did responsibly do when I'm in crisis and I went to a inpatient facility that I knew they had all my information at. I did a nice little 72 hour stay just to talk to some professionals, make sure that they could check off that I was okay like I thought I was. They did. And then through them too, I decided to start doing this uh, outpatient um, rehabilitation yeah. center too, where I could focus good. a little bit more on myself and my sobriety. Good, good, good. Um, are you are you sober right now? Am I literally just I just an hour before us getting on the phone, man, smoked my last joint or officially my last weed that I have on me. This next week is gonna kinda be a test to be like, can okay. I just survive off the cigarettes? There's what's the cigarettes what's the I'm big smoking. what's the big one what's the big one for you? Is it pod? Is it alcohol? Is it like Oh pills? dude the what's... worst the worst thing for me is just and this is where I totally like uh, New Year's, I mean, I'm just at a decent point here in Chicago where I can just hang and uh, hanging out with these rich kids at like New Year's parties and there's just Molly and cocaine and all this other like yeah, upper yeah, yeah, shit yeah. that's regularly available and for free. Okay. And it's all like okay. the yeah, just upper like bandmate press bullshit. And like, and how how ah, how how, so how sober are you from from that stuff? Oh man, yeah. I'd say a couple months now. Well, actually, not months. I'm over jumping myself. It is February, but since okay, a great. couple of days after New Year's, I got to a point okay. independently where I was like, these things are definitely like, I don't know. I was fucking around with them when I was a teenager. I started fucking yeah. around with them again when I was 25, and I'm like, there's a reason I stopped when I was a teenager. So, 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 kinda... so, so, Lex, man. Um, I suppose like. Oh, I want to know from you before we go. Uh, uh, I'm glad to hear that you're doing better. I'm glad to hear that um, you're you're beginning to. It sounds like walk down a a, a good path, and you know you're going to a real therapist and getting off the you know the hard stuff. Um, Absolutely. What's what do you hope for the future, man? Man, I I gotta say, man, and this is the thing too, and the. Uh, I've really done some fucking cool things here in the last seven years. I hope to show you personally sometime, uh, Lyle, yeah, please. but I'm starting to release at least the music side. I've been doing all types of art, but the music side of this stuff is coming throughout uh, 2023 in a pretty expansive form, but also I haven't dropped really anything since before COVID. Mm-hmm. So tons of music rolling out. I got a Dude, short yeah, I remember, of um, horror film I'm developing. sorry, I'm totally interrupting you, but um, I remember... Oh, yeah. I think either I saw you or maybe um, our mutual friend <laughs> saw you and or or maybe he uh, he shared with me um, some music. And I remember I heard it, it must have been high school or college and being like, this shit's fucking hard as hell. This is great. <laughs> Thank you. If I can really quick plug myself on your show, my account is on all platforms well listen when you're next when next time you're back in um baltimore and i'm back in baltimore 
Come, I'm coming to the auto. Let me know if you want to come. I'm coming to the auto bar uh, fucking later this Ooh, year to do my, my gecko thing. Yes, sir. Isn't that in, um, that's in April, right? I thought I saw tickets up for that. No, that's, that's in, right. uh, that's in September. Bar. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Baltimore's in. Good. You've got a April show in Chicago, though, right? Yeah, I see. I'm doing one in Chicago. Yeah, I'm still, I should stay. Unless things get super dramatic, I should still be here. Anyway. Don't stay in Chicago I, I for the sole dramatic, purpose but... of coming to my live show. I'll say that. I am not, Lyle. Trust me. it's not. I love okay. you, man, but it's definitely not just Good. to go to the Gek Show. But I hope that I can go to the Gek Show. That'd be great. Um, I will definitely be well, at the Lex... Chicago Gek Show or the Baltimore Gek Show, at least. If you want to see well, Lex, good, Lex and good. any of the Gek Shows, those two. <laughs> Good, good catching up with you, man. Hit me up on um. We follow Thank each other you. on the computer, man. Hit me up. I'd love to talk again. All right. Definitely. Is there anything will, else you want to say to the? Oh, man, as much shit as I talk to this, I shouldn't have fucking plugged my Instagram account because now people can put this story together if they want to and figure out. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah, dude, Lyle, it was great catching up with you too, man. All right, you too, man. You take care. All right, take care, buddy. Later, man. Um. Good. This good. It's always good catching up with old friends. I'm glad he's doing well. Yeah, Lex was um, uh, a friend of mine in in, in high school, and uh, he was always doing cool, creative stuff. It's cool that yeah, he's watching the 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 stream, the shows. You know, um, it's weird. I feel a, a weird uh, a, a kind of connection to a lot of folks um, from 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 my past uh, through this thing. Cause I get like DMS and comments or, or whatever um, from, from folks I went to high school with or, you know, anything like that. And uh, it's good. It's good to keep connections uh, to all phases of your life.